consists of 5.7 million tons of high-grade copper. It also carries gold, silver, and zinc as byproducts. And then we're going to be looking to expand that with a 20,000-meter exploration campaign. One of the key parts of that milestone with the maiden resource that we announced, it's one of the largest maiden resources on initial disclosure in the camp's history. Hello and welcome to the Assay TV Wednesday. I'm delighted to be joined by Max Porterfield, who is the President, CEO and Director of Calinex Mines. Calinex Mines have a large land position in the Flimflon mining belt with their 100% owned Pine Bay project, which hosts the copper, gold, silver and zinc rainbow deposit. Okay, so just to kick things off, um, can you provide us with a recap of Calinex Mining and its journey so far? Yes, yeah, certainly. We're a publicly traded exploration company with a keen focus on the Flint Farm Greenstone Belt in northern Manitoba. We have two emerging discoveries there, uh, and that's something that's taken place since we refocused the company back there in 2014. We had the rainbow discovery in August 2020. It's emerged as a very high-grade copper, gold, zinc, and silver discovery that Flint Farm is known for. And more recently, last year, we also made the Alchemist discovery. So again, expanding exploration efforts in Flynn Flon at a key time for the community and the world's needs for copper. Excellent. In terms of the Flynn Flon Greenstone Belt, um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? How does it kind of compare to other districts? Yeah, certainly it's one of the top 10 BMS districts in the world. It's known for exceptionally high grade copper. If you look on a global basis, the average grade uh, of mined copper on the world is less than half a percent. And for example, the, uh, the discovery that we've mentioned earlier, the rainbow discovery, we're averaging north of 3% copper uh, based upon the resource estimate we just put out more recently. And a lot of the grades exceed that across the drilling that we've done uh, on that land package. So again, it's very high grade copper, tier one jurisdiction. There's been 32 mines in the Flint Pond Camp's history spanning over a century. And uniquely enough, the flagship mine, the 777 mine that was operated by Hud Bay shut down last July. That's the first time in a hundred year history that uh, Flint Flon hasn't had a mine. And that's been our focus, as I mentioned earlier, is to find the next anchor mine for the community. And I think we're well on the way to doing that with our discoveries. Excellent, you, you did just mention your rainbow um, prospect. What's the current status there? Um, how are things moving forward? Well, we put over 40,000 meters of drilling into rainbow since we hit that discovery hole in August, 2020. And uh, that's over 80 drill holes into the deposit area. We've just published a maiden resource on rainbow and a parallel deposit, historic Pine Bay deposit that was uh, now brought up to 43101 standards on that resource estimate we put out. And right now we're actually testing Rainbow at depth, another target along Strike to the South, and a part of a broader exploration campaign that's well underway uh, for our 2023 uh, exploration efforts. Excellent. And let's look a little bit more at your new discovery, Alchemist. Um, what's currently happening there while exploration? Um, what's next? Well, as part of the, the campaign that we're underway, we have a 20,000 meter campaign, uh, two phases. We're in phase one of that campaign. We're going to be following up to the three intersections, intersections into rain, uh, to, sorry, into Alchemist. Uh, and we'll be following up to that vertically above and vertically below those three intersections. Alchemist and Rainbow sit along a growth fault corridor that's hosted numeral, numerous discoveries and deposits there, two of them past producing mines as well as the Pine Bay deposit, Rainbow and Alchemist. So again, our exploration efforts are focused in honed in on that growth fault corridor. That's similar to the system that hosts the mines in, in Flint Pond, actually. Excellent. And obviously all of this exploration drilling takes a lot of money um, and you've recently re received some funding um, back in March. What, what's the latest with that? What are you looking to allocate that to? Yeah, so we did a $9.4 million capital raise in, in March and that fully funds our 20,000 meters of exploration that we're doing here in 2023. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's two phases, 10,000 meters in phase one, and then 10,000 meters budgeted to follow up on the successes of phase one. We're about three quarters of the way of the phase one drilling. Uh, and then we're following up in the fall with the second half. So again, we're very, very grateful for the support of our shareholders, uh, new and existing, and really pleased with the accomplishment of that capital raise that we've, we've put in our belt now. Okay, so as you've just mentioned, you've just announced um, a high-grade copper made a mineral resource update for your Pine Bay project. Um, can you tell us more about that and give us some more of the numbers? 
we just announced actually earlier this week uh, is actually the maiden resource on the Pine Bay property. Uh, so with that, we put out a resource estimate on the rainbow deposit, which again was the culmination of that 40,000 meters of drilling that we've done. Uh, that came out in the indicated category of 3.44 million tons, a 3.59% copper equivalent. And in the inferred category, it was 1.28 million tons of 2.95% copper equivalent. And on top of that, we have the Pine Bay deposit that's a parallel system about 900 meters away. It was a million tons of 2.62% copper. So on the entire project basis, it was 5.7 million tons of high grade copper that also carries gold, silver, and zinc as byproducts. And then we're going to be looking to expand that with the 20,000 meter exploration campaign. One of the key parts of that milestone with the maiden resource that we announced, it's one of the largest maiden resources on initial disclosure in the camp's history. And, and so just to kind of summarize for investors, what should they be looking out for in terms of milestones in the next 12 months? As we move forward over the next 12 months, we're going to be really expanding the resource base through exploration. And that's the goal. And we have a uh, news flow to that end as we report back on the work that we're completing as part of that 20,000 meter exploration campaign. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Max. Um, it's been a pleasure to hear about all the progress that the company has been making. And we hope to catch up again soon when we've got some more news flow out, which I'm sure will be very soon. I appreciate the time.